place to auto stack your Bitcoin in the US with low fees and easy setup. Just connect your bank account, set the amount and frequency of your buys and rest easy as Swan automatically buys your Bitcoin. Get started using my ref link, swanbitcoin.com slash Levera. Swan is also making a splash on the Bitcoin content scene with Swan Signal pairing up great Bitcoiners for unique and compelling discussions. Broadcast live every Wednesday on Twitter and YouTube, also available as an audio podcast. Recent and upcoming shows include Samson Mao with Parker Lewis, Lynn Alden and Jeff Booth, Robert Breedlove with Corey Clipson. There's a bunch of great shows in the archive. Go and check them out. That's youtube.com slash swansignal and audio at swansignalpodcast.com. Next up is Unchained Capital. Bitcoin native financial services. They're building products and services on top of multi-signature and regular listeners already know you can bring two hardware wallets and use the website to create a vault. But if you need some more assistance, they're now offering vault concierge onboarding packages and assistance with that. So if you're one of those people who's not sure how to set up multi-signature and you want a hand, well, Unchained Capital can guide you through that process. And they also offer loans. So if you need USD, without selling your Bitcoin, well, this is an option. You can put up some Bitcoin as collateral. So go and check them out. They've got incredible content. Uh, I've got some recent episodes with the guys as well. If you're interested, go and check them out at unchained-capital.com. Next up is New Brighton Capital. That's for all my Australian listeners. Did you know you can buy Bitcoin with your superannuation? With a Bitcoin-friendly, self-managed super fund, you can. Step-by-step written and video instructions are available with live ongoing support. New Brighton Capital has streamlined it and made it easy, fast, affordable, and you still hold your keys. As long as you're comfortable making the investment decisions, New Brighton Capital looks after the accounting and reporting for the fund. So for a free 20-minute consultation, go to newbrightoncapital.com and use the code LAVERA for a credit of the monthly fees. So that's newbrightoncapital.com, helping you own Bitcoin in your superannuation. All right, so I'm just bringing in my guests now, Ritzel and Open Arms. Welcome to the show. Hi there. Hello. Hey, guys. So uh, look, I, I, I know a little bit about you, but do you want to just take a minute and tell, tell a bit about yourselves to the listeners? Yeah, sure. Um, so um, I'm, I have a background um, as a computer programmer, studied that. Uh, and and even after, after my studies, I was uh, I was was a little bit curious, like, OK, now studying is over. It was great. Um, I will work for money. So I was always interested. What is this money? So so it was uh, always a question. And, and then later I discovered Bitcoin and it put me deeper on that on that mission. Um, I had a history like a US startup once, so like 10 years ago. So I saw a little bit from that perspective, then worked in open source, open education uh, software, and uh, then catched up with the Room 77 Berlin crowd. So uh, that's a little bit where we located, or at least where I'm located. And, uh, and from there, like we got deeper into into Bitcoin, of course, and then li- Lightning came up, and, uh, and and kind of Jeff from Fulmo was asking me a bit, like, do you, do you like to go deeper on this? And so we started to organize the Lightning Hack Days. Um, so um, I, I'm always for a little bit more from the technical part, like um, like checking out the hack projects, working on the hack table, and then then even did the we did the conference last year, the Lightning Conference. So so kind of uh, or from from that kind of sphere sphere like the like the uh, project Raspberry Blitz project developed. Awesome, and let's hear from you, Open Arms. Yeah, so I just joined the Raspberry project as, as an outside contributor in, in the beginning of 2018. I have an uh, unrelated um, kind of science background and, you know, been always a tinkerer, been um, in during the 2017 kind of GPU mining uh, enthusiasm. I started to build some machines and obviously very quickly, you know, uh, got into got into Bitcoin, got interested in all this and uh, and in 2018, started to build my own nodes, starting with the Raspberry Board project, and then you know got to know the uh, the Raspberry Blitz, which I has been uh, you know absolutely been blown away by, and then um, you know started to want to have my uh, well build it on on machines which I had owned already, so that was different from the Raspberry Pi, and then also you know put some services which I wanted to use. So basically uh, started to contribute and you know from that it's 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 a way of learning for me really a, a huge journey of uh, you know getting experience with all this and the related services. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about how Raspberry Blitz got started? Why was it started? 
Mm -hmm. So uh, it started with the uh, lightning hack days we were doing because we, uh, it was like an in initial, it was a let's get the people together that we now from the Bitcoin crowd and let's try this lightning thing out. And it's always the best experience to try something out to get your hands on. So no, no, not just talking concepts, that's great, but, but also like, okay, we really want to learn how to run a node, how to be part of this infrastructure, how can we build this infrastructure, what learnings do we do that need there? And then we started on the first hack day, we started with the um, with a tutorial from Staticus for the Raspi Bold. That was kind of a tutorial where you go go through line by line um, Linux code and you set up your, your lightning node on a Raspberry Pi. And this was a great start, but we quickly learned that this takes a little bit long time to, to really do this. It's great if you really want to know the details, but, um, but really to get your node ready, we wanted to speed up things. So we started to put it in, into shell scripts and try to ease a little bit the pain points uh, for people over during development so that they can a little bit quicker get to the point, have their node running, and then can more experience what it means to run a node and manage a node. And uh, this was a little bit where the, like I think on a second hack day or something, we had the kind of first shell script uh, set up there. And this was the beginning of the Raspberry Blitz project. And 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 I have always have to say like, thanks for, for Fulmo, always giving me the time to concentrate also and, 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 and keep on experimenting and making it better. Um, so it grew over time and people started to con contribute it also. So a lot of ideas came. So we were seeing like, oh, we need to fix this or we need to make this better. Or can you make, uh, we, can you add this code maybe to, to the code base? So it started from the beginning, like, like a community project uh, that we try to keep together. So we have other people contributing to the project. It's not just kind of me or open arms. There's also Frankie. There were other people in the past that were, were uh, on the project. Uh, so yeah, it started from, from this community perspective and grew over time. It's the code base is now about two years old. So um, yeah, there's a lot of develop there. Great. Uh, yeah, look, I think for listeners who maybe you kind of came into Bitcoin and you were only interested in more in the economic aspect of it and you haven't dived into the technical aspects of it because, you know, running a node can be difficult if you're not familiar with command line and so on. And I think potentially that's where something like the Raspberry Blitz, because it's all sort of nicely scripted out for you, it's a little bit easier in terms of how to set it up. But let's talk a little bit about the features as well, because it's not just Right. So I guess if you're just a listener and you, you're not so familiar with how to run Bitcoin, you might just think, oh, just just download and double click Bitcoin Core and that's it. Right. But there's actually more to it than that. If you want to use it with, say, your hardware wallet or if you want to use Lightning. So can you uh, just outline a little bit for us? What are some of the features that the Raspberry Blitz has and what you can do with it? So maybe open arms. Do you want to take this one? Well, it's a, it's, it would be a long list, right? But um, <laughs> f f first of all, what the Raspberry Blitz is, is a full Bitcoin and Lightning node. So that's what is, everything is built around. And uh, we mostly focused on the Lightning part. So at first we basically had the RTL as the Ride the Lightning interface, uh, as a kind of... Uh, to give it a graphical interface, how to interact with the with the LND command line, and then um, there have been, you know, a lot of other things uh, added, um, and also the scripts are very important, which do help you to set up the node. Uh, so there is a streamlined process of uh, generate a wallet, back up your seed, and then uh, sync the uh, lightning wallet to, your, to to the blockchain and then it gives you some security features of uh, set automatically backing up your uh, static channel backups for example and also gives you uh, options to back up update and also um, to migrate over to to another node for example so uh, the, these yeah. these are the things which which we added and then you know, a lot of other projects which we started to kind of uh, merge in, um, starting from, for example, the Lightning Loop service, um, or now we have other interfaces like the uh, Thunderhawk project, which is another uh, very cool um, graphical interface for R&D. And um, 
I mean, there is a long list. I don't even think I can just, uh, you know, can go through it like that. Um, How to sum up? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's it's it, you can see basically every, everything in the menu, um, and then there are things which are connected both to Bitcoin and Lightning. For example, like BTC Pay Server, uh, which is you know based on both. And then um, yes, re recently we've, we have added Join Market as well, which is more like the you know the on chain part. Yeah. But there are a lot of you know bits and bobs in there. Yeah. May Maybe start a, to start a little bit from from because there are a lot of names of projects, so it's a little bit hard to to maybe sort them out. Maybe start from what you can see first. So it, it's a it, it's based on a Raspberry Pi, right? So you already said you can run a full node on your laptop, but the idea is really really having an always on device because uh, with with Lightning, especially with Lightning, uh, you want to be a if you want to be a routing node, you you need to be a constant part of the of the of the infrastructure. So you have to have your node kind of running all the time that's it could be it's okay if it if it's off for some time maybe but the longer it's on that 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 better so you need a dedicated device this is why we're building on a on, a, on a, such a computer like the raspberry pi because it's quite cheap but gives you a, a, enough power for it that's a lot of node projects do that now nowadays um the, what you maybe see um, compared to other node projects is that the, the raspberry blitz has a little screen on top so so it's a, so it's a, something you stick on top of the of the of the raspberry pi and it gives you like a, a, a nice optic so so it helps you do, doing setup like the simple things like what is my IP my IP my local network so I can easily log into the device um, and and from there it takes you into all the software part like setting it up setting it up so um, at the moment the Raspberry Pi uses SSH to um, to for the setup and and interactive process. So um, you have, it's a little bit you have to open a command uh, line interface like a terminal and then you just type the little uh, command in there that is on the uh, on the LCD display and from there it kind of tries to picks you up even it's all ASCII and it looks a little bit maybe like your interface in the 90s uh, but but it but, but it really takes you from there and then you make your basic setup and then you have all the other apps you can can, can put on top of it and there are then even web UIs like RTL and Sunderhub like open Ops mentioned, then will give you a little bit more like a more easier, um, like an easier uh, screen, like you know from the browser how you can manage your node and yeah from from the feature set there's 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 so much uh, <laughs> it's really hard to 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 put it together but let me let me let me go through the list a little, little quick. You have those web UIs like say, RTL and Thunderhub. You have a block explorer that you can run. So you can run your own block explorer off your on your on your Raspberry Blitz. Um, you have a Electrum server there. So that way you can then uh, that's then for your use so that you can good connection with your hardware wallets. So you don't have to go to some um, Electrum server out there. You have your own Electrum server running that preserves maybe some privacy for you. Um, then you have a BTC Pay server you can experiment with. You have um, that is maybe you can use for running an online shop um, integrating in your into your online shop, so you have your maybe your online shop online, but you keep the you you let it talk with your with your recipe blitz that it sits at your home, um, and then you have something like Spectre where you can uh, a web UI where you can experiment with multi signature uh, setup. So you maybe you have a cold card and a Trether and then a Spectre do it yourself wallet, and you want to experiment with multi uh, signature setups. Um, this helps you in that direction. Um, then we have a lot of stuff that tries to help you manage your node. There there are something like Faraday, like Balance of Satoshi, like LND Manage. Those are kind of command line tools uh, that that helps you a little bit. tries to trying to give you um, hints, uh, maybe what what is a good channel to open or to to or what what channels should I close? Um, something like that. So that different software that tries to give you a little better overview over the network and tries to assist you in in, in your node management if you want to run a, uh, a routing node to become a good routing node in the network. Um, then you have something like Allen Bits that's, uh, that tries to put. You have this one Lightning wallet there, but it tries to puts it into little pieces. So you can, for example, uh, run uh, run sub accounts on this for for 
different purposes there. They have a plugin system where you can make little little POSs like point of sale QR codes, or you can give out uh, vouchers to people or uh, LN URL codes or faucets. So there's a lot of little nice stuff that you can try to, to, to experiment in that direction. Um, then you have mobile wallets you can connect um, like Zap, Zeus, uh, or the um, fully fully noted that tries to manage a little bit more your Bitcoin wallet. So this is this is from the mobile wallets. So you can connect your smartphone to your recipe blitz to have it a little bit more on the go. Um, and then there is all this exciting stuff we see now happening with with the join market integration. Open OMS can maybe go into detail that uh, a little bit later on. Um, but also a lot of little features uh, that try to help you on the backup side. So you can uh, can, can connect it to your uh, to your Dropbox account so that it automatically an encrypted backup is stored somewhere else outside of your home. So if you even if your home burns down, you have somewhere to go to uh, to to find your um, static channel backup to kind of regain control again over your funds. Um, you can also have this in a, with a, connect a little bit USB stick now to to make those backup things. So there's a lot of lot of little little features also in there that's really hard all to 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 put together in a in a, in a, in a list. So but, but we try so we try to give you a documentation on that and try to give you a little we try to put you through the journey like you start with setup and then step by step you can explore and maybe this is a, also why i'm talking it's a community project and why it, why it came from the hack days because we try to put a lot of stuff that is developing very freshly most of the software is very very experimental still um but it's in there so we want to give it give people that are interested a little bit more into the experimenting side of lightning um that they have those tools available that they can experiment with them and can, can give feedback to the projects to the single projects and let them know what they're still missing and so the projects can improve um, not not every feature there is already like production ready for 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 your big uh, setup. It's really we try to give you a box that you can very very good experiment with the features that are in projects that are already out there, and and you can do your own projects and hack projects yourself and and have a good box to to work on that. Yeah, that's a great explanation, and I think uh, for listeners it might be a little bit. Uh, sort of confusing if they wanted to try to run these projects on their own and if they're not already quite tech savvy this is one way you can quickly and easily run a bunch of these different projects all in one sort of scripted together experience uh, open arms did you have anything you wanted to add there yeah, so I just wanted to go back a little to emphasize that how the way we connect through SSH so this is like a secure shell um, tunnel which is opening from a terminal where you get actually have a graphical interface, a, a, a GUI op appearing, and it has great advantage over having like a clear net, uh, you know, web interface because it is an encrypted uh, connection and there is no problem of communicating like a, a seed or, you know, any kind of secrets through this. So it, it sounds a bit, you know, th this is like a first, uh, thing a user needs to kind of get through to to be able especially on windows i mean it's a very native on, on like linux and mac but on on uh, windows you need to usually use an extra application or set up open ssh from the uh, windows web store um, to be able to connect but once this is in you get you get a very stable very secure connection um, and also another thing about the screen which is I mean, it, it's really nice and, you know, it has a, has a very nice feedback continuously that your node is up and running, but also it gives you clues during the setup that what what to do and what to, what is the next step and also what to type in the terminal when you get there. So, yeah, I just wanted to, to, to add those as like unique features of the of the rest of it. Right, yeah. And so let's talk a little bit about target user, right? So, the, I mean, there are different well-known node projects, right? So, for example, the Ronin Dojo is for somebody who's maybe they don't care about Lightning. They just want maximally Samurai Wallet and like CoinJoin and privacy and, and those aspects of it. Um, and then you've got, say, the MyNode or the Noddle. Uh, MyNode might be seen like more, okay, it's kind of like the web interface, as you were mentioning, uh, and maybe uh, the Raspberry Blitz perhaps there's a little bit more of a community focus, maybe a little bit more of like a merchant use case. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're thinking about Raspberry Blitz as compared to some of the other mm -hmm. well-known node projects? 
Sure. Um, I hope I don't mischaracterize another node project. So, but 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 as far as I can see, for example, the um, like you have with the noddle, I think it's a very solid box. It, it tr doesn't try to do all the things, but it tries to do some things really good. And I think it's it's a it's a good thing to go if you're more like a merchant and you want to be self sovereign there on that side and have a good physical security and all those little details. I think there is a good direction to go with the noddle. Um, the my note is a little bit more like i think this is for the people that, for for the people that mostly expect having a product a little bit more like something that that works um, a little bit more out of the box um i think you can have this with the other uh, of course with recipe bits too but but the, the, the my note comes a little bit more from that perspective tries to pick you up with the web browser from the beginning and has like a, a feature set that where everything is well packaged um and and uh, so so you can also try a lot of stuff out but it's but it comes a little bit more with the with this kind of productly feeling like like where we, so if if you really think you're searching for you're really not a tech you don't think of you as a techie user but you want to have lightning uh, then i think the my note is something that's interesting for you the um then there when when we see the recipe blitz i really think uh, it is for you if you have a little bit like a technical interest there i think you need to be a little bit, bit a tinkerer maybe not a really t a hardware tinkerer hardcore kind of style but you're at least interested a little bit geeky um so um and and you you're interested in a little more in the education um have a deeper insight maybe or learn a deeper insight during the, uh, this this journey um how how everything works a little bit like um because it gives you this you can very easily and quickly jump in, into the into the into the details with the with the recipe blitz. So it's a little bit more for people that want to be edu educated on 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 running a node, that want to tinker with it, um, and they they want to maybe a little bit hack on it, develop a little bit on it, have an own project they want to integrate. Then I think the recipe blitz is definitely for you. Um, and it's also for people that like to try stuff out. So if you really think you're one of those early majority people that really like to try out really this, this early stuff, and, and uh, so, so then definitely think the, the recipe blitz is something to, for you to, to, to jump in first. So, and, it's, and it definitely, maybe to also to add, it definitely comes, I think, from, from the other compared to the other nodes from this do-it-yourself perspective. So because we, we offer just maybe to make this clear, you uh, think also the other node projects you, you can build yourself. Uh, so they are all open source. But the Recipe Blitz has, I think, the most direct approach to, um, to get, you can get all the single parts and then just put them together. Like it's all documented on the Recipe Blitz project. Uh, we have a shopping list there uh, that you can on, on, on get all the single parts parts and then you put them together and we try help you step by step to get it running yourself so think from the do-it-yourself perspective also the, the recipe blitz is the most kind of prominent even if you even if there's possibilities to buy it kind of already assembled and a little bit more ready to go if you know if you're just interested in tr uh, getting the software running and trying the software out great so perhaps we can just summarize that as saying this is very there's a diy feel around raspi blitz and it's very much around taking part in the different projects that the community the quote unquote bitcoin community has that there's a lot of different projects that you can try those as inside your raspi blitz and you can either build it yourself or you can buy a pre-made raspi blitz uh and so let's talk a little bit around uh keeping you know security of the node and i think open arms you're touching on some of this as well where at the from the very start you have to ssh in to the box and it's not available over just kind of the home wi-fi if you will so can you tell us a little bit about that and uh what what are some of the things that we should be thinking of when we're trying to secure our bitcoin node so and this is a very iterative process the um you know security is so maybe we have a, a, a good base and then Every time someone would point something out, I mean, this happened more, I think, at the early beginning of the project. When, for example, there's been efforts made that um, there is this little screen on the on on the node, for example, but it's it's locked down in a sense that you cannot log into a user through it. So you cannot use it like a monitor, uh, even if you would attach like a, a keyboard and mouse. You cannot use it like a little computer and just go go on to your uh, friend's node and you know uh, go and, and hack around it. Um, but um, it's, 
starts from setting up passwords, for example. So, so you flash the uh, SD card image, which is provided and PGP signed by, by Rootso, uh, or you know, if anyone else would uh, give out um, an SD card image, that would be an expectation to do. Uh, so you could verify that, or you could even just uh, build the SD card and the scripts from source. So you can just, there is a script which you can run, which is run when we are building the SD card image. You can do it for yourself, so you do, absolutely don't need to rely on that either. Um, and when you first log in, so the screen will show you the IP address where to, where to initiate this SSH connection. Um, and then there is a default password, which you need to change and the first login. So you cannot, you cannot do anything else. You're logged in on the screen until you give your own password, which will change the passwords for all the Linux users uh, on, on, the, on, on your node. And from, that, from then, you can start to set up. And only then you will be coming to the steps where you set up your Lightning node and you will be giving a seed you will be getting given a seed and uh, etc. Also, you have you know more. You will have more passwords to note. <laughs> so there is only so we call it like a password A. It's for it's like the master password, which is which is uh, accessing your SSH. So it gives you pseudo access, super user access, and also um, so with that you can modify anything. But then there is a password B, which is the same as the RPC password, uh, the Bitcoin RPC password, and we use that um, from the Bitcoin conf. Uh, we use that to control other services. So, for example, you can log in with that password to the RTL by interface to Thunderhub. It can be a password for the Joy Market user and, and, and etc. So, we encourage you to use um, a good password for that. And also, it is um, like enforced, you need at least eight characters of uh, of a password, and so you cannot just use something very very easy. Um, and then there is password C, which is unlocking your your uh, Lightning wallet. And all all of these wallets. So I mean, we have mainly two hot wallets here: the LND wallet, first of all, which is encrypted. Not only so it consists of a seed, uses a twenty four word seed. There is like an optional passphrase, which we did not uh, really carry on using because uh, that gives some added complexity, which is then might make it difficult to restore. But then uh, there is the encryption password, uh, which is um, which we call a password C, password C uh, as a letter C. And um, that is needed every time you restart the node, you can uh, you need you would need to type it in unless uh, ignoring all the warnings you want to activate the auto unlock feature where it would be obviously need to be stored on the on the node and then it would be automatically unlocked um, so i mean we don't keep so there are nodes i mean in more specifically the the nodo for example uh, or the samurai version which does encrypt the disks I mean, we do look into this, and there is like, you know, this is something which would be a, a, a very nice feature, but also we need to uh, think of how, what trade offs does it, does it come to and how would that limit us to kind of be able to restore in a kind of failure, especially that we have, you know, we have no control over what kind of hardware the, the user uses. So not everything is encrypted, but the wallets are. and. Also, all the interfaces are um, kind of guarded by a password. Yep. I guess just to summarize for listeners, just to make sure people can follow along, basically what you were mentioning there is some of the passwords around access to your Bitcoin node. And so typically you would set these in your bitcoin.conf file, and that includes the RPC password. So RPC means remote procedure call. And the idea is internally inside the system there's kind of different authentications now for listeners if you're if you're not technical don't worry like the, the wizard walks you through this right but yes, we're just trying yes. to talk you through so you understand what's going on in the background there um and also 
what about uh, just, I guess, on the local network? Uh, I presume you've got, because uh, I think uh, even uh, Zelko was borrowing some tips from you, OpenOMS, on UFW, wasn't it? Uh, the uh, I forgot the exact what it stands for. Something firewall, uncommon, uncomplicated, uncomplicated. firewall. Yeah, yeah, uncomplicated firewall. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, I mean, we do use the like the basic hardening uh, measures which can be done on, on, on a Linux uh, computer, which is, you know, by... I mean, by nature, is much more secure than than you know any of the Windows computers around, right? And and also we do so when just setting up the node and and when we are running this build SD card build script, we are removing a lot of uh, unnecessary packages which are sitting on there, being in the Raspbian uh, distro, but uh, not needed for for our use case. Um, so yes, we use the. There are two things mainly, which is the that is the fail to ban uh, application, which is called like fail number two ban, which stops uh, an attacker being able to brute force the password or the SSH password in this case. So it would after three wrong tries, it would ban for like ten minutes. So you know people sometimes come to us that oh I cannot log into to my node although I'm not sure about the password, well, then, you know, you would need to write, need to wait another 10 minutes and maybe another one afterwards. And the UFV, UFW, the uncomplicated firewall, does just uh, make sh makes sure that only the ports which are used are, are open. Uh, so in the install scripts and the uninstall scripts, we open the ports which are, which, which are needed, for example, 3000 uh, for RTL. And if user would uninstall the application that that uh port would be closed again uh, so this is uh, again just uh yeah kind of a measure on the network as you say because we cannot really i mean it would presume that someone's home network is safe ish <laughs> but sure. the, there is no yeah there is no guarantee to do that and you know there we have all kind of uh um you know there's internet of things and these things are listening and uh, you know, snooping and trying to collect data on you. So, yeah, just need to do the basics. Right. And so we can understand that as we're trying to, where possible, minimize the possible attack ways that somebody can get into the machine and try to take the secrets or monitor it or things like that. Um, also, I think it would be great to talk a little bit about if if you want to operate your node remotely. So let's say, you know, I buy the Raspberry Blitz, I have it sitting at home, and I want to use Lightning while I'm out. Uh, you know, how how would I do that? Yeah, I think this is the, this is the place where you normally connect a mobile wallet to you, to it. So so you have your smartphone and you you want to connect it to to your node. There are like Zeb Wallet uh, is available for iOS and Android. Uh, there's a Zeus Wallet that's also available for Android and, and iOS. And the Send Many app is a smaller one, but it's also available. Um, so those are those and uh, those are the wallets we support. So what you do is once you set up your recipe blitz, you just go to their mobile uh, and say I want to connect my 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 smartphone. And then it gives you a pairing code, uh, like, and you scan this pairing code then with this with this, your smartphone, and then the, yeah, then the smartphone can securely connect to your to your Raspberry Blitz. Uh, that that's how it should work, <laughs> but now it comes the complicated part that you're behind uh, your your internet router. And normally, we were this was not built like that you can the idea was that we are consumers no right so we we, we the idea was not that we we could uh, we should provide services to the outside um at least the internet was built for that but the internet providers had different ideas um so the uh, it's a little bit there comes some technical problems so of course you can connect it for your local network like with the pairing code and then you're on your same wi-fi no problem but then a mobile wallet makes no sense right you want to go outside and and have it from for also from the outside and there's a lot of a long journey we we, we, we try to build solutions out um so first of all when people can configure their router of course there's a there's a possibility to, to, to forward ports so that something from the outside can go to direct to where this wallet needs to talk to but that's but then you need to control over your router you have to be, need to be able to configure this uh, some people can but not everybody can so if you if you use the wi-fi from your neighbor's house for example uh, you, you will not be able to to open a port to you and 
a lot of internet providers also don't allow you uh, or completely shield you from the outside and doesn't even give you those this this this, this possibility. So this will not work for everybody. So then there was the idea like. Um, why not use Tor? So, so you can. It's it's the idea that you can run the complete recipe blitz behind Tor, and then also this this uh, wallet can get a hidden hidden service address like a port address, like you know from various uh, Tor websites you can call. And the good thing is those addresses are then reachable. They they kind of tunnel through your router. Like Tor has this this can do this. So, but then you your mobile wallet can just talk to this Tor address. Um, some mobile wallets uh, try to integrate Tor now. So Zap Wallet tries to do this. Um, other wallet you can use with a proxy program that you can have on your smartphone. Um, it's a little bit hard to set up. Even on my smartphone, sometimes it's, 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 it's a little bit of pain uh, to, to get this working. So this also is a step better, but still it's not the not the, not the easy out of the box solution for everybody still uh, so so where we were going now a little bit more is into this uh, developed a service called ip2 tor so um this started on on one of our hack sprints uh, as on our, our online events of the hack days uh, the idea came up and also like steady curse that built the recipe bold tutorial in the beginning and was building on the on the uh, shift crypto uh, bitbox base had also this idea how can we make it easy maybe we can use tor to get out to get easy outside of the router uh, and, and use the anonymity that Tor gives you. But then to the outside world, we can we can there's a service somewhere that then gives you a, a public IP, like rents you out kind of an IP and a port address. And once you have that, you can very easily like when you activate that, you can very easily like just a QR code scan it and then wherever you go, your phone will be able to to connect to your uh, to your recipe blitz. So this is a way not just for, for, for the mobile wallets, but this is one of the first applications where you can see the benefits that, um, that this kind of service now integrated can help you out a bit on, on, on to make it more easy and so that you don't need to do all this configuration part on your infrastructure and even if you're not possible to do this that you have a way out and an easy way to do this um, but and I here have to warn it's uh, it's a subscription service so this is something then you you pay for um, but but it's not something that um, the recipe blitz project is is, is, is is running just for for themselves it's it's an open source project so anybody can set up such a shop out there uh, the recipe blitz the next version will come out with a, with a with a shop from fulmo that is kind of per default in there but you uh, but you can exchange it with every other shop address that could be out there in the future and then you just choose a bridge there it's still a little bit tech technical uh, but but at least we will be trying out the technical concept now and then you can really just pay this for for a day like you paid 40 satoshis for this right you, the good thing is we have a lightning node here right so so you can pay services around that that gives you additional infrastructure you can make make, make payments there very easily to to rent such services and we can make very small transactions now like 40 satoshis for, for for using it for a day and then it can uh, then it will automatically make the recurring payments if you really like if, if it's working for you so try it out for one day if it's not working you cancel it uh, but if it's working for you you can keep it running and it will kind of make little small micro payments in a subscription base to use this infrastructure so you have not a lot of upfront risk you also have and the good thing is about the service uh, we like a lot is it, it, it you're using Tor, right, to connect to it. So you're an, uh, on a non-site there. So nobody, we, we don't know who you are. We just see a, a Tor address we should forward the traffic to or we as running the shop at the moment. So, and, and then you pay with Lightning and we also don't know who pays us. We, we just see we got paid and now for a service to to to, to um, forward those traffic to your recipe blitz to do this one tour address and so so this is a very nice setup where all the benefits we hope like from lightning come together it gives it it adds to this an anonymous use case uh, and 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 you have this micro payments for small infrastructure you just pay for the infrastructure you need a little bit and and this also uh, this ip to tor can then enable other web services you can also run on your on your recipe blitz and want to have it easily accessible from the outside so so uh, this is a little bit the journey like where but but it's not that easy because again the internet that we use was not built that we run the service at at our home but in the end, we can do the bandwidth is there. The technology is cheap enough. We have now projects also on other kind of projects. You can see more and more this idea comes. I don't want to have any, everything in the cloud. I want to have stuff at my home. And so step by step, we, we, we kind of gaining, gaining this territory again.
Yeah, that's really interesting and very clever approach of trying to, in some ways, get the best of both worlds. And so if you are a user who wants to run a BTC Pay shop at home, um, this is another example. Um, so I guess there's probably the two main examples that I'm thinking of. So one is you're a user who wants to connect back to your Lightning node at home using Zeus, for example, on my Android phone. This is something that can help you with that to make it a bit easier. And then the other one is if you want to run, a, if you're a merchant and you want to make it so that the outside world, somebody just types in like a normal website address, but really on, in the background, it's actually going to your Raspberry Blitz and that's where you're doing the actual sale of material, right? Or, or whatever you're selling. Yeah, well, but we had to we had to solve one one last bit there because this was exactly the point for the for the mobile wallet. There's no problem. They 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 use their own certificate to secure the communication. Um, but when you were talking about services like BTC Pay, for example, which which is a website you kind of serve, um, you, we also needed to take care that this uh, this is end to end encrypt, uh, encrypted, right? So uh, because there would be uh, if if you don't would not use this HTTPS, uh, there would be parts that are going over the internet. People could read and we don't nobody wants that today this is this is 10 years <laughs> ago so um so but here comes the last part so that that a normal web browser should work in a normal web browser and so that so that you get this little http secure sign there you need to use a, a, a ssl service that is accepted by the browsers um, normally you can make a self certificate so you can create, just create it yourself but then every browser will just warn you this is an unsecure service don't use this and then a lot of people would be scared of and and this would not work. And a lot of features you cannot then not use in the, in, in the browser, like using the camera and all the stuff that might be interesting for some services. So what we had to solve was also that you can use um, um, Let's Encrypt, for example. It's a free uh, service out there where every web, everybody that runs a website can get a free certificate so that it, that it works in your normal web browser for, for the people using the website. And now you can use uh, um, also the... Um, on, on the recipe blitz, you can also make a Let's Encrypt subscription now uh, with with the uh, for your for for example for your IP tutor address uh, that where you then serve your your BTC Pay server. Then you can go into this merchant direction, uh, or what what is the other project we now um, have in the one point six that that will easily integrate with with IP tutor and with the Let's Encrypt is the LN bits, where we hope to make some little bit more services to your local community possible that uh, that the rest blitz can serve, and you can maybe get a little bit more active with your local community and provide Bitcoin and Lightning services. So, can you tell us a little bit about what LN bits offers there and how that works? Sure. Um, there, there are kind of two concepts. There's a lot of other stuff you can do with, with Allen Bits, but there are two concepts that kind of we are interested in, where we can see it can make sense to, to run a recipe blitz for you um, and for your local community. Um, the one is on, do you remember, you remember uh, like paper wallets, right, from what we had in early on in Big Bitcoin yeah. and like to, to pass around to, to onboard people, to just give them the first Satoshis or maybe it was not a Bitcoin, but it was at least some amount on there so that, uh, that people get interested. So um, it was a nice way to do this, and and but with Lightning, this got complicated again a bit because um, yes, you can normally it, you have to install a wallet there, and then I have, will, will maybe send something from my mobile wallet to your mobile wallet. But we don't have this. I can give, can give you kind of a voucher gift card there. That's uh, and and with Ellen Bits, for example, by using uh, Ellen URL. We can create vouchers again, so little QR codes that are just static that you can print out and give somebody. And if this person scans this QR code, it, uh, this person can get the satoshis on there. Um, Ellen URL uh, uses so some wallets, mobile wallets support um, Ellen URL, and then they can directly. So you scan it just with your mobile wallet, and it directly gets you. Get, you you get the satoshis there from my recipe blitz, right? So so I give you kind of vouchers, satoshi. I give you allowances, little allowances over satoshis out as paper uh, that you can then use. Um, but the LM bits puts it a, um, a, um, one step further because the um, what, what is with, not everybody has a mobile wallet installed already, right? So it, people just see a QR code there. And what LNUL allows is give you give, put, to put a fallback URL in, in there. So uh, so if you just scan it with your normal phone, and most camera apps now do this, you point it at, at, at a QR code and it says, oh, there's a web address in there. Do you want to open this? And say, okay, I open this. And then it opens 
opened up uh, a, a mobile wallet that is served from Allen Bits, from your Raspberry Blitz, from your home. And uh, it, it's like a temporary wallet that you get, like a web wallet that is instantly there for you, like that you can then use. And you can and even spend it from there. So it can then can make use of the camera of, of the smartphone and you can directly go somewhere and, for example, buy something with that. So and it's an easy, it's a very um, easy way to onboard people, to, to let them, without explaining them, you have to, 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 to install a wallet first or whatever. You just give them the paper. You can put it into post boxes, for example. Just go around your neighborhood, put it, put, put, make a nice flyer, put, put a QR code on there. Uh, so just uh, so a single is a single QR code for everybody, but you just print them out on stickers and you put them put it on flyer. You put it into into post boxes and let people know this is your first Satoshi's here. Take care about them um, and transfer them somewhere safe where where you can use them. Uh, but but it's a gift to to onboard people. This is the one side, for example, that you can do, like educating people, like owning their first kind of Satoshi's. And you do this with your really with your own recipe blitz at home. So you don't rely on a central service for that or something. Everybody can start in a very decentralized way with that. Um, the second part that uh, that we would be a little bit aiming for is the um, we call it cash in the back. It's maybe not the best name right now, but it, but but I think it's, it gives you a little bit the idea. It's it's about merchant onboarding. It's the idea like you have little stores in your neighborhood, and normally you have some social trust to them. It works. You need some social trust there because what you do is you, you, you take a little bag, you put fiat cash in there, some US dollars or whatever, like euros, and then you give it to them, to, 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 to the merchant. And what you also do, you put into this little bag uh, from the Allen Bits, there's a plugin called TPOS, also a little QR code. But this QR code now is, is like a, um, a URL, a, um, a web address. And when, when, when the merchant just scans this at, at the store, it opens a, a, a point of sale um, UI in, in the web browser, just, a, just, just as a website. So no app needs to be installed. So if somebody comes to the store and wants to pay now with Bitcoin, the merchant remembers, oh yeah, I got this bag here from this friendly guy I like. And uh, so, so yeah, you want to pay with Bitcoin, I take the bag, I, I take out this QR code, scan it, and now I have the point of sale in my store. I present, uh, I type in what what the customer has to pay. I present it to the uh, to the customer. The customer then scans that, pays that, uh, pays that invoice that that was created. But this Bitcoin is now not going not going to the merchant. This Bitcoin or Satoshi's are going to your Raspberry Blitz. But the merchant now can just say, okay, there was five US dollars, for example, that you just paid. I see that it got paid. And now I'm allowed to open this bag and take the fiat out, like the five US dollars, and put it into my normal register. So nice thing here for the merchant, nothing changes. The, the register stays the same. The whole process, the whole book, bookkeeping stays the same. But but because you're taking like care a little bit of this first complex steps like running a node, um, giving this, uh, having an account running here. So, so you buy in the end the, the Bitcoin from the merchant. Like there, if somebody pays with Bitcoin, you buy this Bitcoin from this merchant and directly give them the cash. You upfronted the cash, it's already there. Um, and this, this makes it very easy, I think, for people to, to get started. It's not a solution to onboard merchants with large volumes, but it's something where you can get started so a merchant can, can try it out without risk because you're upfronting the money, right? So um, it's, I think it's, I cannot think of an easier way to, to, to get people into the talk of, oh, why, why not accept Bitcoin at my store? And um, so these are two things you can do for your local community then with your recipe blitz using the Allen bits and you can run it securely behind Tor uh, and, and but have it available to the outside with a, with a Let's Encrypt certificate through, IP, through, through something like this IP2 Tor service. So the, the little pieces come together where we can see a good journey where the recipe blitz can also go and deliver additional services to, uh, for, for you and maybe why you're running a node, not just to be routing node, also to deliver some some services to your local community. That's very clever. I like the idea. And so basically you are setting up some of these merchants with a small petty cash amount, like it might be a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars worth, something small. Yeah. And you know them. So it's kind of there's there's some level of trust there. And then they can start at a very low investment level in terms of work required to accept Bitcoin. And so that's uh, potentially something that you could try uh, and as like a little way to kind of build your lo local community. Uh, I just wanted to 
confirm then. So would that be lightning only or could they also just do, could the customer in person at that point do an on-chain payment there? Technically, there could also be on-chain payments, but we don't have this feature uh, in there. So at the moment, it's con it's concentrating on Lightning, especially if you talk small amounts. If you you can start with something like putting twenty US dollars in that in that in that, in that uh, bag. So, I think Bitcoin transactions make sense now in in store a little bit like feeling like from ten US dollars below that we want to try out Lightning, and and maybe even. I think it's a good starting point. Technically, it's possible. And if somebody's very interested and said, I I love this idea and I want on-chain Bitcoin in there, uh, let's talk because that's exactly why this is an open source project. But we just have a limited amount of time. And I think the lightning part was the most reasonable to start. Because, of course. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and you know what? I think um, it, th that might also make sense for when people are doing those little you know, farmers markets or just kind of little markets where you've just got a stall and you're just temporarily setting up for a day and you might want to be able to take lightning and you're selling small little things that cost, you know, two or five dollars, something like that. That's probably a good example there where if you had, if that merchant has, say, an iPad or a, a tablet and then they just use that for the website and then the customer is just scanning and paying with their whatever lightning wallet they've got, that might be another way where you can quickly set up a lot of these merchants and all they need is their own phone or tablet to take the payment with and you give them the bag and off you go right and then you're kind of yeah. you're, you're starting so yeah, that's you, that's you have no you have no hardware costs right we normally we talk about a point of sale or something and then you have to put hardware out or everybody has to install an app first and then uh, another app to install so this is really just a qr code you give, give out to them and, and and you can have small instructions on this card like oh somebody wants to pay with bitcoin go there scan this and punch in the amount and I think that's that's it's very easy easy steps to follow right yeah yeah uh, and uh, just around hardware more broadly uh are there any i guess what are some of the considerations for a user out there when they're building a raspberry blitz uh, i guess the one one key consideration might be the choice between using say a hard drive versus an ssd a solid state drive right because there's a cost consideration but then also one's more reliable and more uh, performant, more efficient than the other. Uh, do you have any thoughts around that that you can offer for listeners? I think Open Arms can give more details, but I just want to mention one sure. point um, because we tried out a lot of hardware stuff. Uh, so, but and, and I like because it's a do-it-yourself project. It comes from a do-it-yourself approach. People like to use hardware they have lying around um, but i really want to say take a look at the shopping list that we have on the rest people's website because that's this is the hardware we kind of most tested and have the best best kind of feeling to to recommend to you to use uh, because there are some hard drives have different kind of power power consumption and stuff but but this is exactly something where, where open arms can give you more details <laughs> Right. So, so, yeah, this mainly comes from a community. So, you know, I, I like to test for myself and, you know, use um, a couple of things which are either lying around or, you know, I, I get some new new hardware. I mean, I started with a hard disk and then, you know, managed to be, this was before the static channel backups that managed to fail. And then, you know, I, I lost some Satoshi's uh, typical story. Um, which, you know, I mean, th this has been a donation now to the network because there is no way to recover them. I still have the pop key, you know, I can look at it, but uh, right. Um, <laughs> it is um, what it is. And uh, the big advantage of the SSD, or the solid state drive, that it doesn't have a spinning disk in there. And even it ha if it has a hardware, if it has like a power failure or um, an code reset you know a sudden shutdown when you plug when you just uh, pull a plug uh, it won't hurt physically i mean it, and it even if it does um kind of mess up the file system it's usually more easily repairable obviously than a physical damage so for that reason to be on the safer side i would always use an ssd which is also a good quality one but you need to be, as Ritzo said, you need to be aware of, of the different kind of power consumptions. And also they might need, so some of them still might need an external power source because to be the most compact package, to have the most compact package, we try to power everything from the through the Raspberry Pi. So we put just one power plug in there and then through the USB, the SSD would be uh, powered, which is, you know, it's not the way they are designed, but 
a lot of them can take this and working reliably for years. Also, in regards of the size, we now recommend a hundred, uh, a thousand, what is that? A gigabyte. One terabyte. So yeah. One terabyte, right? Uh, <laughs> because to, to fit everything in there, uh, because I mean, all of us started with 500 gigabytes uh, drives, uh, but, uh, and then with the Raspberry Pi 4, it's, it's particularly in the sense that you need to be very careful about which kind of connector you use between the USB port and the and the disk, because uh, most of them, especially the old ones, or, or unfortunately the cheap ones, don't don't work because they're not compatible with the standard uh, the Raspberry Pi itself is using. Uh, but if you're getting it right, you know, you can download the uh, blockchain in like two to three days. So it is a huge difference, whereas with the using a hard disk, it would be at least a week. So there is a big advantage in there. So it works that it maybe costs now maybe one and a half to maximum of two times of, of a hard disk, but uh, you get better reliability and, and speed as well. Yeah, yeah. And I guess for me, when I'm speaking to a new coiner or I'm trying to teach someone how to get, do, get into Bitcoin, I, I sometimes face that because you're, you're trying to think of something that you, you don't want to push too high a cost onto them and say, oh, you need to go and get the best hardware. So, so part of me, you know, part of, yeah, and we probably want to try and tell them, oh, hey, you can just start out with something cheap. And then if you like that, then, you know, kind of move further up. And then you, you might have some other friends who are kind of, they've already got lots of money and it's not a big deal for them to go buy an SSD and the okay. more fancy hardware, right? Um, so, yeah. Um, one, other, one other point I thought would be interesting to discuss is just around future hardware trends, right? So I think right now, most people are, you know, they're comfortable with using Raspberry Pis, even though technically it's not fully, fully open source. And so there are some in the kind of Bitcoin world who are more hardware and security focused, and they're talking about, say, oh, we need to move towards hardware that's not potentially backdoored and things like, you know, Raptor open source uh, hardware and things like that. But the, obviously the trade-off is that stuff costs a lot more. It's not as, you know, it's larger. It's not as, um, you know, easy. Whereas right now, the easy kind of node solutions are using things like Raspberry Pi or the Rock 64 and things like that. So I, I'm just curious on your views. Uh, do you see it like for a couple more years, people are just going to be using Raspberry Pis because that's what's cost effective. And then potentially uh, in the future, people will be moving towards more of those open, like the, uh, the open hardware. Well, yeah, I mean this this is this is a huge topic. Uh, you know, there is no such thing, unfortunately, at the moment, which is fully open source hardware. So, so that is a scale, right? So, so in there are more open source uh, single board computers like the ones from Pine sixty four or from the Hard Kernel, which are called Odroids. You know, I like those very much, but uh, you know, the compatibility and the support is not really comparable to what the Raspberry Pi Pi has. Uh, and also, all the software stack we are running on top is, is fully open source, and we, you know, we try to verify. I mean, we verify as much as possible, or building from source or or PG, or with PGP or through the the Linux repositories. So, you know, there is some control we can we can give, even if there is some um, partially closed source firmware running on the chips, for example, on the GPU of the of the Raspberry Pi. You know, that cannot really do much and i mean if you would think of risking i mean now we are capable of running like a routing node and you can we can do coin joint and things like that but if you are thinking of you know putting like hundred thousands of dollars worth of money there or bitcoin there that it might be you know raspberry pi might not be your your thing <laughs> this is you know this is not for the life savings but I mean, the capabilities is almost there. So, you know, I mean, everyone needs to kind of, that's when you, you try to, when you think of like uh, keeping the money in a, in a paranoid cold storage setup, right? Uh, rather than rather than in a hot wallet, in a, in a little, you know, hundred dollars worth computer setup or like 200 altogether. So, um, I, 
the trend, I, I'm really hopeful that we will see some things like RISC, RISC V and we can see the small microcontrollers already appearing, which can be fully open source. But uh, I think for now, as, as it looks, the Raspberry Pi is a very good base to, to, to build on. Although, you know, I'm, I'm experimenting with other stuff and uh, I like to share those with anyone. But, uh, you know, the interest is not there that much. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a totally fair um, point because we have to be pragmatic as well, that we can't just go out saying, oh, yeah, everyone needs to like go for the maximum uh, possible. I think it's also got to be about what's uh, compatibility and figuring out when you're helping somebody uh, what sort of pieces of hardware are well supported and that there's a lot of there's a big community around that. So it's easy to find, ask questions and Google things and ask things where yeah, but I think potentially that is something that maybe all the Bitcoin people will be moving towards uh, um, in future years. Um, once it once it becomes a little bit more feasible, I would say. Uh, what would what do you guys think? I, I personally th think that uh, the Raspberry Pi is great because even if you if you make this experiment with running a full node, and after I don't know after months or something, you see okay, this is maybe nothing not nothing for me or something. I, I learned maybe a bit, but okay, that's okay. I learned my part. Then you can still make use of this Raspberry Pi very, very easy because there's so much other projects that are out there. There's a whole maker scene around around the Raspberry Pi. You can give it to, to, to a friend or you, of, of yours and we'll, we'll be happy because he has already three ideas what he can do with that. So so I really think that this Raspberry Pi is, is a good starting board and I think it's the most reliable, like little small computer also from the price point. It's, it's very, very, very good from the processing power. Now we have a good setup and I think from the setup we have right now for the Raspberry, it's something that it's a good solid base even for the coming years um, but but open arms already experimented with other hardware platforms so once there is some nice open source board that really at least makes makes it possible to to also see all this stuff fulfilling that we see for the future and we wish for the future like open more open source hardware then i think this this is something we, we definitely then will, will try to to get into the direction but i think for now and also with a limited kind of amount of time you have for testing and on all this stuff i think we have a good hope found a good home with the raspberry pi of course yeah i totally think uh, it's a um, good option for people to look at so uh yeah, give us the um, give us the, I guess the pitch. Why, if somebody is a listener and they haven't set up their own Bitcoin node, why should they, yeah, you know, try Raspberry Blitz? Oh, when you haven't put up your node, I always say like we know not your uh, not your keys, not your Bitcoin, right? So I always like to say not your node, not your rules. So there is there's uh, at least having the experience. I think not everybody needs to run a node, you know, but but I think everybody should at least make some. Especially if you're now in, in, in this early Bitcoin scene, you you really like the avant-garde of of, uh, of of a technology. We all hope that will be get get more mainstream soon. Um, then then I think it's it's a good education to to learn what it means to run a full node even if you just do install the render the, the bitcoin core for, for, for on your on your laptop that's also a good start but then really experimenting with such a such a hardware i think this is definitely something i can recommend because it gives you this feeling of really running your own service and your own server like you really you're starting to 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 really run your own machine there at home and this this really gives you gives you a good experience and especially the recipe blitz if you're if you're um i think a lot of on, on when you go to bitcoin bitcoin meetups and you bring your little recipe blitz with you i think it's always a great topic uh, to get people started because you are you always it always brings people together and this is definitely something we see um like uh, on the hack days and all this experience like this is a project and people like to connect on and and exchange uh, um, ideas on so so it's always a great starting topic to, to also to to, to for, for meetups and to talk to other people in the scene of course open arms anything to add um, well, this is pretty much the you know approach I, I came to as well. But uh, I mean, it depends how much you want to and how, how much you value you know a couple of satoshis. But you know, there's a great feeling that you can actually um, you know generate some yield on these things. You know, it's not significant, <laughs> but you are able to run um, a, a routing node, and you know, just a feeling that you're actually contributing to to a decentralized payment network, and there are payments going through you. Uh, or through your node is 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 a huge huge thing and you know you, you need to start small to be able to participate big in the future so i think that that is it, it makes makes people very uh i mean you know it it thrown me 
uh, through men as well and then you know also is now not only having the lightning node part of it but we have the drone market which is you know as you probably know or the listeners know there is this make or take a model where you can offer your um coins as a liquidity for for coin joins as well which you can generate a, a, a little bit of income and also uh, improves your privacy fantastic so if listeners want to find you online or they want to get a raspberry blitz where can they find you guys um i think you, you can fi you will find the project on github if you just type in a uh, recipe blitz or if you type, type in recipe blitz into google you should find it there is a short link like recipe blitz.org so this is a website that at least uh, then you find all the maybe the, the the most important links there's if you want to just pick up recipe blitz like re pre ready made then i can recommend to you the fulmo shop it's shop.fulmo.org and uh, there you have some you can order the parts all in package but again the shopping list is also on the project site if you want to want to buy everything by by yourself so um this is excellent and i'm root soul on twitter so i think there are where can i I'll try to keep people updated on on the project and and yeah, open arms yes so i i have a, a, a little shop bitcoin only running as well it is at, at the domain uh, diynodes.com if you would be interested in not spending fiat but some bitcoin then you know uh, I, I do offer the most uh, kind of successful setups of mine there as well uh, and then you know i'm very happy to talk about these things alternative hardware you know uh, new projects and and just really anything ongoing on most of the kind of um popular social media in bitcoin circles which is mainly twitter telegram mastodon um keybase you know that's um, i'm open on over there and on github of, of course excellent well look i enjoyed chatting with you guys and i think that will be really great for my listeners to hear a little bit about the raspberry blitz so thank you for joining me guys and listeners you can find me at stefanlevera.com that's it from us and we'll see you guys in the citadel